gives me great pleasure to welcome a superstar scholar, a superstar scholar of social movements, uh, Dr. Ho Ming Xiu, uh, to our, uh, our Taiwan Expert series. Uh, Ming Xiu is a professor of sociology at National Taiwan University, Taida, where he received his doctorate. Uh, he was also a visiting scholar at the Harvard's Yenjing Institute, where he worked on his latest uh, and extraordinarily timely book, Challenging Beijing's Mandate of Heaven, Taiwan's Sunflower Movement, and Hong Kong's Umbrella Movement. He has written almost innumerable articles on social movements in Taiwan pertaining to environmentalism, labor, same-sex marriage, religion, the middle class, and gender. Uh, one gets the sense in reviewing his incredible record uh, that, that social movements have served as a window uh, for the myriad ways in which Taiwan's politics and society have transformed around you over the last few decades. So welcome, Ming Xiu. It's so great to have you uh, here. Oh, thank you, Ashley. It's a very generous introduction. Uh, maybe I can add more on my for my self-introduction? Absolutely, please do. Hi, Hi I'm Michelle Ho, uh, Michelle, uh, I'm a sociologist. Yeah, as actually has said that my main research focus is on social movements in Taiwan. And um, but you probably know that uh, social movements in Taiwan has made a lot of social changes in recent Taiwan from same-sex marriage, from environmental protection, even it has impacts on cross strait relationships. So I'm really glad that I choose this field as my research focus 20 years ago when I first stepped into Taiwan's academia. I have benefited a lot from them, uh, from them and I learned a lot. Um, I just grew up intellectually with uh, Taiwan's further march into democracies and the CV activism really is fascinating a topic for me. And I want to ask you, how did you get involved in the study of social movements? Uh, I, uh, I recall uh, saying once that it wasn't your first, uh, your first inclination, but, but later you would come to embrace this topic. Uh, how did you get involved in this research? Yeah, I got my PhD in year 2000 and at that time, the research topic was about Taiwan's environmentalism. Uh, well, it's just a uh, one string of civic activism that really emerged in mid eighties. And that was a time when Taiwan was leaving its authoritarian past and began to liberalize politically. And I was a teenager at that time. So I entered the college at 1991, but we all know one year before that there was a big incident of student movement, which is called wild leading movement. So I was one year behind that when I entered the uh, college as an undergraduate. And, but since then, I think the college has changed a lot. I don't even feel the legacy of student activism. So a lot of activists who become students, who become activists, and after they graduate, they become full-time NGO workers or become politician was few years senior to me. Um, so I, I was never an activist uh, in serious sense of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I kind of, uh, their the, the career trajectory is always an intellectual puzzle for me because they they were participants in the campus when they were a student, but they were campaigner for reform after they graduate. And over the years, it made a lot of change. So. Um, just out of a little bit, probably a bibliographic reason that I want to know more about these uh, people who just uh, a few years senior to me, and their career trajectory actually was in in thing with the Taiwan's political change. So I think because it's quite interesting, I I first know them as a student, and then they will become leader of the NGO, then they become politician. So it's kind of marked the transition of Taiwan's uh, politics as well as the great, great, greater maturing of the civil society. So that's the, the from their own people are graphic change. I, I, I kind of saw the, the, the macro change of Taiwan society and that is very fascinating. Mm. Um, 
you have had a foundational impact as a scholar on social movements in Taiwan as a research area. How has this area changed since the early days? I mean, you just you just said that the very nature of social movements themselves, of activism has changed, but how's the literature, how has scholarship in this area changed? Maybe- in Yeah, I think the field of social movement study in Taiwan also changed with a broader environment. Well, in the mid eighties, I think that's where this field really emerged. And you look at uh, those founding researchers like Professor Michael Xiao, Xiao Xinhuang, who is my advisor, yeah. they really didn't begin their academic career as a social movement study uh, researcher. So like, for example, Michael Xiao got his PhD in the uh, uh, United States in year 1979. And his topic was about a uh, land reform in Taiwan and. South Korea, which of course is a very, very critical uh, incident in the whole Taiwan's post-war era. But when the social protests emerged in the mid 80s, scholars like Michael uh, Xiao just switched their attention to civil society. But so, so they really laid the foundation. And afterwards, we had wild leading movement in the 1990s. And these ex-student activists become, they, the, some of them became uh, went abroad and pursued a PhD and, and come back, become full-time academia, academics. And they were a second generation of, of social movement uh, researchers in Taiwan. So I think it's quite interesting that a social movement become more institutionalized in a democratic Taiwan. Social movement study also underwent the, the same uh, transformation that become a very established field in Taiwan. So. I think both feel kind of mutually reinforce each other because like, for example, like uh, women's movements in Taiwan, most of the leaders came from uh, female professors and they mm -hmm. were student activists for women's cause earlier and they got their tenure, become professors, they become leaders in that, in that area. So it's, you see this interesting dynamic. So it's quite interesting to see how since it evolved in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. You mentioned civil society and Xiao Xinhuang's um, important role in shaping that literature. What do you see as the connection between civil society and social movements uh, in the well, research well, sense or in, yeah, on the ground? Well, in Taiwan? Yeah, of course, civil society is a broader category. Uh, civil society re really refers to the, the realm of, of voluntary association, and some of them are devoted for service. Some of them are devoted for like philanthropy, charities, and by definition of that, they are not political. But social movement is a, a subcategory of the civil society, which is more uh, of made of the advocacy group. And most of the time they use protests as a way to advance their cause. So uh, these two things, of course, are not synonymous. But mm -hmm. if you want to more look at the most prominent feature of a civil society. And those uh, sectors of civil society that really have a political impact. And, and especially when Taiwan went from authoritarian rule to democracy, these are the people who, these are the sectors that are mostly likely to, to show the change of a political win. So I think it's very important to highlight the law of a social movement in when you want to look at a broader picture of the civil society in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh, now, as you look around, uh, you know, maybe areas of research that you know well, uh, whether it's civil society or social movements or other areas, what do you see as the most promising places to do future research? Uh, maybe for young scholars who are watching this interview, what mm -hmm. do you think are, are, are great places that they might be able to invest their energy to further the broader objective of Taiwan studies and to, to, to delve deeply and meaningfully uh, into research related to Taiwan. I, I think Taiwan studies is always a very dynamic field. Um, for people who like me who are based in Taiwan, probably don't feel that way, but people who are based overseas, actually you see the change more clearly in Taiwan than the people in Taiwan. We got used to it. We got kind of numbed by the changes surrounding us. But uh, in, in my past research, according to my, my, my own experience, I think there are some prominent topics I think 
maybe a uh, younger scholar might be interested in pursuit because they are kind of be more perennial in the sense that it's going to be a continuing issue like environmental protection, climate action, and Taiwan has in a large, a lot, a lot of ambitious program for renewable energies. Uh, the problem is mostly focused on air pollution and nuclear waste, but also that is related to climate action. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be the interest if Taiwan's energy transition is successful. Successful, I think that would be the the model in the East Asia concern. Uh, context because Taiwan is well. If the current trend continues, will be the first East Asian country to about it, go nuclear free in twenty twenty five. That's one issue. And then the second issue is that also related to social movement is that the LGBT rights because we just Taiwan just legalized same sex marriage in twenty nineteen, the first one in Asia. Mm -hmm. And but the LG. LGBT community is still in, in, in action and the Taiwan parade, which was held annually in November, was still a major attraction from the neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. So Taiwan example could be a, a case that that could be probably applied to other uh, neighboring regions. And I think environmental and gender issue are probably is going to be definitely Continuing layer in the focus for certain period of time. And if you were a, a young P, PhD a candidate, I think you probably are going to worry that whether your topic is going to sell and because mm -hmm. you have work, you are going to work a harmful job based on your, your, your topic. But I think Taiwan do offer this. It is in terms of environmental issues and the gender issue, a more broadly applicable uh, attraction that to your future colleagues uh, who might not really interested in Taiwan, but who see the generalizability as a late democratic side, democratic side country, how to embrace these progressive values. I think that would be probably a, a, probably a a lesson for other countries as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, I think that's I think that's good. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it's those those comments are very insightful. I, th I think we're done uh, with the interview now.